Okay, good morning. Welcome to the second geometry lecture. This is section 1.2 of Geometry Revisited, and it's called Chebus Theorem. Um, in order to understand this theorem, you have to know what a Chebian is. And a Chebian in a triangle is simply a seg line segment that starts at one of the vertexes and goes to the opposite side. So in this case, AX is a Chebian, BY is a Chebian, and CZ is a Chebian. And here's the theorem. <coughs> The three Chebians, AX, BY, and CZ, are concurrent if and only if BX over XC times CY over YA times AZ over ZB equals 1. What does concurrent mean? Oh, sorry, sweetie. Concurrent means they all hit at, at one single point in the middle. Okay? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, so I'm not going to... Uh, take the time to prove this theorem both ways, but I'll show you one way and then I'll sketch the other way. So what I'm going to show now that says, I'm going to show <coughs> if the Chebians are concurrent, then this, these ratios multiply to be 1. So let's take a look at how to do that. It actually is a fairly simple proof. It, really the only thing it involves is uh, the area of a triangle is base times height. So we're going to try to understand what Bx over Xc is. Okay, we're going to assume the Chebians are concurrent. We're going to prove this our ratio equals 1. Bx over Xc is actually equal to the area, and I'm going to adopt the jam tree revisited convention for area of a triangle by just putting in parentheses. Bx over Xc is equal to the area of the triangle ABX. Area of ABX over the area of the triangle AXC. And let me just take a quick second to explain why that's true. The reason that's true is the area of this triangle ABX is the base BX times the height here. And the area of this triangle AXC is equal to the base also times the height, which is the same. So since the height's the same, the, er the areas have a ratio of BX over XC. Now, you can see two other triangles in this picture, and I know it's going to get crowded, but you can see two other triangles in this picture that have the same ratio. They're the triangles BPX and uh, CPX. Let me just draw, sketch these in orange just so you can see them. It also equals that and that. Okay. So, the, now here's the, the amazing observation, is that we can now subtract these two ratios and say the area of angle of triangle ABX minus BPX divided by the area of AXC minus the area of CPX. And when I take my big red triangles and I take away the orange triangles, and I hope this shows up, let me try green, I get left with this triangle. A, P, B, and the triangle A, P, C. Okay. So believe it or not, this is equal to, <coughs> excuse me, A, P, B, the area of triangle A, P, B, over the, the triangle A, P, B over, let's call it A, P, C. So Bx over Xc is equal to the ratio of the areas of the, tri of the two triangles, APB and APC. So let me write that up here for a second. Now for, for yourself at, at home, you can go through, and we now have to compute the ratio of Cy over Ya and AZ over ZB. Now, you can go through exactly the same process that we went through before and find that CY over YA is the area of triangle BCP. This triangle here, BCP, over, can you see what other triangle it is? It's the same as we had before, it's area APB. If you go through and do all the work through all the math, Similarly, AZ over ZB equals triangle CAP 
divided by <coughs> the area of the triangle BCP. And now you'll notice that when we multiply this quantity times this quantity times this quantity, we have an APB, triangle APB on top and APB on the bottom. We have triangle CAP on the top, which has and triangle CAP on the bottom here, which is the same as triangle APC. And we have triangle BCP on the top, triangle BCP on the bottom. So when you multiply these three quantities together, you get one. So it's actually not a complicated proof at all of this of this very interesting fact. It just uses the fact that the area of the triangle is base times height and clever arithmetic with the areas of the triangles. So now I said, what happens if what happens if it's the other way around? If those ratios equal one, let me take a quick break and redraw the triangle. Just turn the camera off while I do that. Okay, so here I, you didn't need to take the time to see me draw all this stuff. To prove it the other way, we assume that the ratios bx over xc times cy over ya times az prime over z prime b equals 1, and we want to show that that means all the Chevians are concurrent. Uh, so what we do is we assume, we know that this ratio equals 1, this mul multiplication of these three ratios equals 1, and assume they're not concurrent. So assume that ax and by intersect here, and that cz doesn't, doesn't hit here. And we know this equals 1. And what we do is we just draw in the one that does intersect, and we'll call that Z. And we know from the first thing we proved that when we go around the circle BX over XC, CY over YA times AZ over ZB does equal 1, but that means that AZ over ZB equals AZ prime over Z prime B, so Z and Z prime are the same. But I went through that quickly. You can convince yourself that that's, that makes a lot of sense. And so that's Chivas theorem. The exercises in this section of Geometry Revisited show you some very interesting things you can do with Chivas theorem and Chivians. The first one is, it says, you know, prove that the medians intersect in one place. So hopefully if you think about that for one second, you can see how Chivas theorem quickly proves that if you take the medians of a triangle, that those will all intersect place. And the other thing uh, in Geometry Revisited is something called Stewart's Theorem in the exercises, which is not necessarily using Chivas Theorem, but in fact it just is a formula about Chivians, which is a wonderful little theorem. A, B, C. So let's call this side length A, this side length B, this side length C, this Chivian P, length P, and M, and N. Then we get the amazing formula, A times the quantity, P squared plus MN, equals uh, C squared N plus B squared M. This is called Stewart's theorem. And it's a wonderful little theorem about Chevians. Not that difficult to prove. Uh, I think the easiest way to prove it involves trigonometry, but if you uh, have had a, a course in trigonometry, you'll see this little formula, and who knows, you know, if you're ever doing uh, any math contest, this sometimes can be a very useful formula. Okay, so that's section 1.2 of Geometry Revisited. Hopefully you enjoyed this lecture.